The tide is coming in so fast. Look at the sandbag, it's almost gone. Uh, I'm gonna have to swim. I was not expecting the channel to be this, this deep. Plus there's a lot of current. The tide is ripping through here. My name is Cyril Choquet. And I travel the world chasing monster fish. This time, I'm on the coast of Tanzania, East Africa, an area known for its giant sharks. But I'm here after a predator fish with such a bad temper, he's been seen ramming sharks to death with its big blunt head. The giant trevally, aka GT, is a real bulldog of a fish. It combines speed and explosive force Huge fish. to devastating effect. And it can grow to massive sizes. More than 85 kilos? Mm. Everything is at the breaking point right now, including my back. <sighs> no! I'm in Tanzania on a mission to catch a giant trevally. These fish can get massive, over 150 pounds. And I'm telling you, they're so powerful, they rule the reefs around here. They've even taken a run at divers who've encroached on their turf. And with their incredible speed and power, they compete with sharks and another apex predator, the massive Dr. Tuna. I've come here to the coast of Tanzania to fish the waters of the Indian Ocean. I've heard stories of huge GTs here. So I've come to meet a fisherman that has spent his life on these waters. I'm hoping he can give me some clues. Mohammed? Good boat. <laughs> and right away, he shows me how big these GTs can get. My God. Really? Like this? 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 Like Karambisi, yeah. Karambisi, yeah. Or conji. Out at sea, far. In deep water? In the bay, no no more. No? All gone? Okay. Asante sana. Asante sana. Respect for a lifelong fisherman. <laughs> and just as I was leaving, I see something that happens everywhere in the world. That's pretty sad. I hate to see dead sharks. But you know, happens everywhere in the world. Tiger shark, huh? I'm running. That's a young tiger shark. Look, the fins were cut off. And in a lot of places in the world, they actually cut all the fins off. See, the, the fins of the shark are missing. They've been cut off. They, they cut the, the dorsal fin. They must have cut, cut off the pectoral fins. Yeah, pectoral fin is gone. And uh, yeah, the caudal is gone too. Part of the caudal fin is it's been cut off as well. And you know why they do that? Because the resale value of the fins is higher than the body itself. Because the flesh of the shark is, you can sell it, but it doesn't sell for much. And you know, a shark usually is big, so it takes a lot of room on a boat, it takes a lot of gas to bring it back. So just, just, just keep the fins, throw the body. You know, it's said that about 100 million sharks are slaughtered every year, mainly for this finning, shark finning. It's very sad, but here, they're gonna eat it. It's not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna have to find a boat. But for now, Mohammed told me about one of the only spots nearby where there could still be monster GTs. But to get there, I have to walk out to the end of a long, narrow sandbar that juts out into the sea. I keep casting, 
but the wind makes it really tough. I just changed lures because this one is really good. The problem with it is that it's not really heavy, so it doesn't cast well into the wind. And right now, I have to cast into the wind to reach the drop off the deep water. And uh, this one here is a lot heavier, so you can ca I can cast it like a missile. It just punches through the wind. So it's perfect. And it's a good lure tour. It's a very good lure. Now I'm casting my lure where it needs to be. But not a single bite. I can't see any, but I'm sure there are GTs swimming nearby. But I just realized I've been here a little too long. The tide is coming in so fast. Look at the sandbag, it's almost gone. Completely gone. Uh, and I have to swim. to get back to the mainland. It's pretty far, and I know there are tiger sharks around. And that's not the only problem. Hey, man. I was not expecting the channel to be this deep. Plus, there's a lot of current. The tide is ripping through here. The current is super strong. I could get pulled out to sea. to keep calm, breathe, and continue to swim across the current. <sighs> yes. Man, I didn't realize that the channel was this deep. And a current. I wind up on a small island. I don't know if it's good for GTs, but I'm here, so I'm gonna give it a shot. giant trevally, a baby one. Man, I told you those fish can get humongous, over 150 pounds. <laughs> We're far from it. It's, it's gotta be two pounds, this fish. But the power they have is incredible, even at that size. After an entire day fishing from the shore, it's pretty obvious that if I want a monster GT, I'm gonna have to get on a boat. I've come to a small village to meet a fisherman whose name is Dimbo. I've been told he has a little boat. Hello. I'm Cyril. Welcome. Nice to meet you. I was told that uh, Dimbo lives here. Dimbo. Dimbo, a fisherman. Sit here. Yeah. Come here. Are you Hello. Dimbo? Hey, I'm Dimbo. How are you? Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I was told you're, you're a fisherman, right? Yeah, I'm fishing. All right. Yeah. Thank you. How long have you been fishing for? More than 12 or 15 years, I did fishing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, so you know all the good spots. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I've been fishing from the shore, but I'm not doing much. You know, like it's, uh, it's hard to find a big fish. And I'm looking for a Karambisi GT, a giant trevally. Yeah, we can go because I have outrigger. Outrigger? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And he fishes with you too? Yeah, I do see. Does, does he speak uh, English a little bit? Because my Swahili is very limited. Well, I could not matter. Hakuna Matata, no problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> we'll, we'll find a way to communicate. You'll do the translation. Yeah, I do. That will do that.
It's bright and early, and we're off on Dimbo's boat. It's a traditional sailboat, a dugout with outriggers on either side to keep it steady in the waves. But today, there's almost no wind, so we gotta paddle. We're getting to a drop off close to some deep water, the GT's hunting ground. So this is a good spot for fishing. Yeah? Yeah, because this is a deep sea. You see, this is the reef, this is the wall. How deep is it here, you'd say? 70. About 70 meters? Seven, yeah, it is. Wow. Must be, a, must be some big fish down there, no? Yeah. Big fish usually like deep water and take advantage of the wall of the drop-off to ambush and trap prey. The slur might look really big to you, but I'm telling you, for a big GT, it's a snack. It's a, it's a peanut, I would say. They don't care. They're so aggressive and they get so big, they'll attack anything. So the idea with this lure is that it floats. So I cast it as far as possible. And then boom, once it hits the surface, I give some nice big twitches on the rod like this to make it pop. So that's why it's called a popper. It makes a lot of noise on the surface and it calls the fish up the water column, they can hear it real deep or from a distance, and they come and attack it on the surface. It's really visual. And when I, I want to nail it, so boom, they come up from the bottom of the pool. It's really, uh, really exciting. pretty hard popping from when you're sitting down, but you know, it's kind of a really unstable. So if I stand up, it's a little perilous, you know, but I'm gonna do it. You know, you get a better angle on the lure like this when you're standing up, so you can give it better motion. But if I get a fish attacking the lure, standing up in this position and my footing is not really good, I might just get, <laughs> pulled overboard. It's so narrow that I have one foot like this and the other foot like this. So basically I'm, I'm standing like a duck. <laughs> so I have zero bounce. If I get, a, if I get an attack on the, on the lure, ooh, you know what? One thing at a time. Let's get a fish to attack this lure first and I worry about the consequences after. Do it, do it, do it, do it. It's the fishing, do it. <laughs> yeah. He's not the one making that thing pop all day long, I'm telling you. You must think I'm crazy fishing like that, no? Yeah, it is, sometimes. <laughs> Sweating, casting like a maniac trying to get the fish to bite while you're relaxed, you know, just setting your line down and waiting for a bite. I'm trying, I'm doing the opposite. I'm, I'm trying to provoke those fish. Yeah, that's good. Yeah? Yeah, that's good. Do that, you catch. Oh, yeah? No break with you, huh? Like, keep, keep casting, buddy, keep casting. <laughs> Oh, 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 fish, fish, fish. Yeah, GT. Come on, fish, come on. Oh. Wow. Did you see that? Yeah, so many. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> good job, good job. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Oh, no, it's not a GT. It's a big eye trevally. Man, if I get a big one, it's gonna be tough landing in from, from this boat. Oh. Oh. 
Good job. Good job, man. Thank you, Good my job. man. I told you this this lure is not big. Look, you know, this fish is not that big and it attacked a huge lure for its size. Can we keep with this fish for dinner? Yeah, yeah, no problem, yeah. You want to keep it? I want to keep it. There you go, my friend. Oh, thank you. It's a good fish to bring back to the village? Yeah, it is. For local people, we're giving them local people for dinner. Yeah, it's a good one. Thank you, guys. Thank you, too. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you for the catch. A lot of work, huh? It is. Especially in this heat. All right, let's keep working at it. The wind has picked up a bit, but not enough to set the sails. So we gotta keep paddling. Look, 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 look. My God. There's something huge swimming right beside us. Oh. Oh, yeah. You see them? Yeah. Whale sharks are big ones. Yeah, my God. A big fish. There's whale sharks right here. See the big one there. Feeding on the surface. I know these waters are home to other kinds of sharks, but I can't help it. I have to see these giants up close. Reaching sizes in excess of 40 feet, whale sharks are the biggest fish in the ocean. And despite their gigantic size, they're harmless. They only eat plankton or tiny fish along the surface. There's a few of them around, and they swim right up to me. This is such a privilege, to be able to swim with these gentle giants. Oh, it's beautiful, guys. Oh, my God. Thanks for spotting him. Oh, my yeah, my God. <laughs> <sighs> Big fish. This is good, uh, good. good sign for fishing, right? It, it is. Uh, Super. Uh, Oh. It's good, Omen? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good one. Very good. Let's get back to fishing. Come on, big fish. <laughs> It's over 100 degrees. We've been at it for over three hours now, but with not much to show for it yet. Oh, you had a bite? Yeah. Oh, you got a fish there. All right. Ah, yeah, oh, trigger fish. <laughs> Good job, my man. Good job, man. You're better fisherman than me. <laughs> Little trigger fish. Oh, you don't like it, huh? No good? No good. No good. Get your release. He's better than me. <laughs> He's catching something at least. Do popa, do popa for fishing. Yeah? Yeah. This is fishing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Not resting. It can be long. It can take a long time before you get ahead. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Keep pounding the water. Keep working that lure. And if you give up, you'll never get that one fish. That one big fish you're chasing. So you gotta keep at it, even when you wanna give up. Oh, the fish is chasing. Oh, yeah. Your yeah, Gigi's coming up for the popper. They're coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
They go, big one, big one. Here, here, here. They go down, down. Be careful. The fish tries to swim back down to the reef. I gotta stop it, or it might break me off. This is brutal. fish but not the monster I'm looking for yet this fish is really tired I'm gonna put it right back into the water because it's just as tired as I am and I don't want to I don't want to hurt it good work guys <laughs> you too man good job good job guys good job you good fishman <laughs> thank you big GT it was hard but we catch it that was a good size GT, yeah. That was a nice fish for sure, but it's still far from what I'm looking for. For that, I have to go farther out where there are more big fish. The wind has picked up a bit, but I still need a boat with a motor. This morning, I'm meeting with a local fisherman that will certainly be able to help me out. Your alley? Yes. Mambo Vipi. Poha, Karibu. How are you doing? I'm doing well, yeah? thank you. This is your boat right there? No, this is not <laughs> mine. Mine is over oh, there. Oh, it's a dow there, huh? Yeah, it's a that's nice. small dow there. I've been trying to catch Karambisi, you know, like, a, and I've been told that you're, you're the one fisherman I should talk to on the island. <laughs> you're because, welcome. Because, yeah, I've caught a decent sized fish, you know, like about this size, but yeah. I won't. You think we can, uh, you, uh, we can do that? Yes, we can. Yeah? Yes. All right, let's do it, man. man. We're on our way to some remote underwater reefs. All right, my friend, let's catch a fish. The captain is a professional fisherman, and like Ali, he knows where we're most likely to find a big predator I'm after. On the way, I put two lines out. You never know. So everything come from deep, from the deep, deep reef. That confirms what I was thinking. To better my chances, I need to fish the reefs further offshore, where there's less fishing pressure. Yeah, we have to catch something, because we gotta eat tonight. The only thing we have is rice, so. I mean, I like rice, don't get me wrong. We need protein. Man, it's hot even when you're not doing anything. I'm just holding a rod, you know, trolling, not even casting. So imagine when I'm casting and bringing that popper in. It's deadly. It's so hot. Fish on this line. Fish, fish. This line, this line. So, my friend, so, 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 yeah. Get a fish. Thanks. I don't know what it is yet, but we'll soon find out. It's not a big fish. It's a, it's a GT, a small GT. Oh no, it's a, it's a big eye trevally. Putting my glove on, because those fish, they have very sharp bones on, on the tail. And it's, a, it's hard on the fingers, it can cut your fingers. Look, you know what I'm talking about. You see the bones here? This is a blade. It's really, really sharp, so no gloves. You're, you're, in, for, you're in for some trouble. No wonder they call Big Eye Trevally. Look at the size of the eyes. Huge. Clearly a sight, a sight hunter. I would put it back, 
but we gotta eat. And the guys really like this kind of fish. Thank you, my friend. Watch your fingers, huh? but in terms of fishing, especially casting, it's a real challenge. There's so many obstacles in the way of my cast. There's ropes here, there's a mast, there's a mast on the, on the deck here. <laughs> you gotta be careful when, you, when, you're, when you're casting, not to get tangled in something. And not to break your rod too when, you, when you're popping. I keep casting, but it's scorching out. We're baking in the sun, and we're between tides. Fish are not really on the hunt right now. Plus, the captain is really hungry. I think it's time for a break. We drop anchor near a sandbar that's become exposed with the low tide. Ali prepares the fish, while the captain and I build a shelter from the burning sun, using a sail. <laughs> to cook the fish, we place the fillets between wooden splints. Then, tie it all together to make sure it holds. As for the fire, some dried coconuts that the guys always keep on the boat. Are you hungry? Very, very hungry. Yeah? Yeah. Very hungry, huh? But me and him, we like head, head piece. The head, huh? The head. It's all yours, man. This is good fish. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's very clean. Let's go catch another one <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> Have you ever hooked a, a really big GT like that you couldn't land? I remember one time, me and two friends of mine decided we go fishing. All of a sudden, the fish start to go. All of the line was almost finished. It's three kilometers and something. What do you mean? Like he pulled you for three kilometers? Three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, very big one. 72. Kilos? Kilogram. Wow. Taller than me. That is huge. Imagine, he got pulled by the fish for three kilometers. That's two miles before he could land it. But honestly, I, I could get pulled for 15 miles. I don't care to land a fish like this. No problem. I really want to catch that fish. Once again, I'm getting kicked off a sandbar by the rising tide. Uh, I think it's time to go. <laughs> it's time we get back to fishing. The tide is moving, and predators like GTs should be on the hunt. It's so hard. Unbearable, so we're gonna put a roof over our head. We create some shade with a sail, because the sun is way too intense. But it's really just for the captain and Ali. Because if I want to catch that monster fish, I have to keep casting and bake in the sun. On, 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 yep, on. Huge fish, huge fish, huge fish. Ooh, out of the water, big one. It's a huge GT, huge fish. Big, big GT, guys. The fish heads full speed towards the back of the boat. That boat is too long. Careful, 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 careful. Now it's going to the front of the boat. Yeah, I yell at. Careful. But on the rope. The boat is too long and the ropes. Oh no! What happened? He broke me off. Huh? What happened? He cut me off on the bow, on the hull. It was a huge GT. 
and I was trying to keep the fish to the back of the boat, but he ran me underneath the boat and the line touched the hull. That was it. Broke me off. Well, that's what happens when you play with monster fish. Can't win all the time. A lot of times you actually, you actually lose. Like now. I just lost a huge fish. And finding another one that big will be tough. Especially with all the work it takes and the heat. At the market this morning, I see firsthand that there is fishing pressure on here. And with the boats I've been on so far, I just can't get out far enough. But I have a plan to get on a bigger boat. I've been fishing for three days, and I've only managed to catch a single nice GT. Beautiful GT! But I lost a really big one. Oh no! He broke me off! Ah. I'm on my way to meet a crew I know. They have a bigger motorboat, and they've told me about some spots practically untouched, far from land. Well, I hope I'm gonna catch that big GT over there. I've fished with JJ in the past, and I'm sure he can help me find the monster GT I've been chasing. Hey, guys. Hey, sir, how are you? JJ, how are you? All Good right. to see you again. You still look young, man. You haven't aged at all. I shaved him. Yeah. <laughs> Here's JJ's crew. Hey, Ali. Hi, sir. His first mate, Ali. Second mate Bernard. Hi, good Hi, to meet guys. you, man. Hey, Matty. And Matty, the captain. Fine. Long time. Yeah, long time. All right, long I can't time. even tell who you are, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> the sun, huh? Yeah. All right. Come back, Sarah. Well, it's good to see you. Yeah. All right, let's go catch some fish, guys. And we're off, headed much further than I've been able to so far, towards underwater reefs, 150 miles from the coast. Where the fish are, guys. We arrive on top of the first reef, and we're gonna try to fish with bait. But first, we gotta catch some. There's dolphins, there's birds, there's, uh, there's bait over there. Should be some big fish around here. This concentration of birds is a sign that the water is teeming with bait fish, and the predators shouldn't be far behind. Look at the bonita on top. They're hunting, it's beautiful. It's a real feeding frenzy. The bait fish is pushed up to the surface by the predators down below and attacked by the birds from above. Now is the time to catch a good sized bait for a GT. Yep. It's very important to catch this bait because that's the key to catching a monster fish. Wow, there's a duck through that chasing it. I have to land this fish before it gets eaten. Oh, he's coming back for it. No, no, it's good. Turn away. There we go. All right, guys. Good job, man. Yeah. We got some bait. This might seem like a big bait, but I'm telling you, that's the size we want. We dropped the bait down to the reef. This has got to be monsters down there. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Here we go. That's serious. Now we got a big fish on. Real big. Swimming towards the boat. Yeah, it's okay. Careful. Dougie? I don't know, Dougie or King Master? It looks like it might be another apex predator from the reefs around here. The Dr. Tuna. I see him there. Oh no, it's a shark. No, shark, man. Oh, uh, damn. False alarm. The shark. We don't want to hurt the shark, 
so we need to get the hook out before we set it free. I'm gonna try and get the hook out. I'm gonna try, I don't know if I'm at it. You got it, you got it. A shark is definitely not what we're after. In fact, we wanted to avoid him entirely. Plus, he just ate our only bait. Too bad, I really thought that was it. Yeah, it went. It took off, huh? it really went down. Yeah, like yeah a, I really thought that was it, man. Like a proper fish, yeah? yeah. We're on our way to another reef, some 300 feet straight down. Much deeper water here. I'm gonna switch up my technique and try some vertical fishing. It's the first few drops of jigging, they hurt. You're not warmed up, and the pain is real. But then if you hook a fish, the adrenaline kicks in and you don't feel a thing anymore. <laughs> Good hit. Ooh. I was fishing in about 100 meters of water. That's, that's close to 300 feet. You can get almost anything down there. I don't know what it is. Touching the reef. Yeah, it's a big GT, yeah? You think it's a GT, yeah? Yeah, might be lucky. I think that might be the big GT, the monster GT I've been chasing. But it's too close to the bottom right now. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, it's, I think it's off the reef now. Yeah, it's off. I finally managed to get the fish out of the rocks. And all of a sudden, he dives right back down. monsters to live on the reef close to the bottom. And that's where they want to go back to. This type of fishing is really hard on your back. I don't know what to do. This fish is stuck on the bottom. It's wrapped around a, a rock. It might break me off anytime. time. Uh. Oh, no! Got you. Thank you, man. Oh, well, bad luck, bad luck. That was monstrous, whatever that was. Yeah, where you reefed you. I think it was a GT that could have wrapped me in on the bottom? Probably a GT or a big grouper. There was nothing I could do. This fish was wrapped on a, on a rock on the bottom, wrapped around. If the fish that just broke me off was a GT, he must have been massive. I couldn't stop it. I really want to see what's down there. And since I have some gear on board, I'm gonna take a look. Yes. looks pretty healthy. With a large diversity of small fish, the entire food chain should be here. All the way to the top predators, even sharks. I'm gonna go up to the top of this reef. Nice new grouper. Oh, they're bluefin trevallies. They look like GTs, but they don't get nearly as big. Plus, their heads are not as blunt. There seems to be more over there. There might be GTs too. The bluefins are on the hunt, but I won't try to keep up. They're way too fast. Still good for air. There's gotta be a big GT here somewhere. Wow, the size of that fish. 
Unreal. It's not a GT. It's even bigger and known to be more powerful. It's a dog to tuna or doggy. There seems to be some serious dog to tuna around here. If I got one like that, the fight would be even more intense than with a GT. The Dr. Tuna is a massive top predator. At over 230 pounds, it can get bigger than a GT. I've never caught a huge one before, but after what I just saw, you can be sure I'm gonna try. With the light fitting, I'm gonna use a glow-in-the-dark jig like this one. At the end of the day, and especially in 300 feet of water, it's pretty dark down there. So the jig will be much more visible to the fish. This is it. This fish is super powerful, and if it gets down to the reef, there's a good chance it'll break me off. So I have to keep it up. It's not as funny with daylight still. <laughs> Big fish on jig, eh? All right. Yeah, I'll take your one. Mari, Mari, yeah. He's getting to the reef there. The fish makes another run. Mari gives it some gas to help me keep it away from the reef. If it's a doctor tuna, then it's even bigger than the one I saw in my dive. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, he's he coming up. Yeah. I can feel him. He's coming up. Yeah, he's cast up, yeah. He's a oh yeah, a sheep there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh my, it's giant. It's a big fish, yeah. yeah I'm gonna try it on this side here, if I can. Ali, she can get. Get the leader. All right. All right. Let me pull back a little bit. All right. It's huge. Let me, let me get the jig out of its mouth so we don't get hooked on it. Got the jig? Whoa. That's a big fish, guys. What a monster. Might not be the giant GT I was looking for, but look at the size of this Dr. Tuna. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's a monster right there. I still can't believe it. How big is this fish, DJ? It's a monster, too, man. That's a good, good 80 kilos, at least. 80 kilos? Yeah. My God. <laughs> That's close to a world record. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting a big GT come in here, man. You put me on a huge doggy. Yeah, the doggy of my life. It's going to be any bigger than any GT you're going to catch, man. Yeah. No, the GT is totally... I forgot about the GT. <laughs> I'm coming back next time for a GT, guys. All right. <laughs> I came to Tanzania 
after a monster giant trevally. And I managed to get a nice one. Beautiful, a GT. But I wanted bigger. I had a monster on my line. Oh no! For a little while. He broke me off. Ah. Giving up was out of the question. Yep. Yep. And with JJ's crew, I caught a giant fish. Unbelievable. Much bigger than the giant trevally was here for. Yeah, man. 